All right, a very warm welcome to you. This is Market Pulse, and today we want to have a conversation that is specifically targeted to anyone operating within the Uber and transportation sector. And also for you, if you're a car owner and you're looking at an a more efficient way of running your car and trying to make sure that the cost of fuel then does not become a problem. And of course, here in Kenya, the cost of fuel has been a headache for a lot of Kenyans. To help me with that conversation this morning, I'm joined by Am Ismail, who is the managing director of Taka Dalbit. This is a company that operates in the region, and one of the things that they do is conversions. And I'm sure for a lot of you who are listening and watching this episode, one of the things that you have seen is the number of cars that are now converting into gas not just uh, using electric cars, but there are those that are converting to natural gas. So, Am, um, thank you so much for making time to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And it's a pleasure being here with you today. All right. So, one of the things that we, we would really want to understand is natural gas. How is it even a viable idea for someone to, to think this can fuel my car? Because, again, this is something that is a, it's still a very new concept. And you, you have been in this space for a couple of years now, and I just want to understand how, how is the reception in the market? So, um, yeah, so basically the, the utilization of natural gas in the, in the transportation sector has been there in, in different markets for more than 30 years. And it is considered as a cheaper, cleaner, affordable and reliable source of energy. Yeah. Uh, it is a friendly environment as it uh, decreases the carbon dioxide emissions by 25% as compared to petrol and diesel. So uh, there is a de technology behind usage of uh, uh, natural gas uh, for the transportation sector. Uh, usually the pipe, usually we, 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 we receive the gas from the pipeline that has been explored uh, from the wells and then it has been uh, connected to a filling station, a typical filling station, right, like the normal ones for, for petrol and gas. Yeah. Where the only uh, difference is we have an integrated solution where we add at this filling station something like the, the car service uh, 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 retail shop, which is the conversion center, mm -hmm. uh, where we can uh, convert the vehicles that are running under petrol or diesel to gas. And here we receive the gas and then we have another process uh, on, on this gas to be able to, uh, for the vehicle to be uh, filled with, yeah. which is the compression. So uh, we compress the gas uh, and we receive the gas from four to seven bars uh, at the pipeline. We compress it up to 250 bars mm -hmm. and then we push it through the pipes to the pump. And then you get the gas in, in, in different formats uh, with a cylinder that was in, um, on the on the back side of the truck yeah uh, that is filled at, and receive this gas and then the car can easily uh, run under the natural gas with safety high safety precautions all right so one of the questions that i'm sure a lot of our audience would want to know is what is the difference between compressed natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas yeah. because the, there is a misconception and there are those that believe it is the same uh, gas that is being put in, in a vehicle. So I just want you to help us understand the difference between those two. That's a very good question and thank you for bringing this actually because that was one of the uh, misinterpretation and perceptions when we came to the country introducing usage of gas for transportation. Everyone when I say gas in Tanzania they perceived it as LPG. So LPG is liquefied petroleum gas uh, where the component of LPG is almost 96% petrol and 4% gas. Num this is number one. Number two, LPG is imported, while CNG is compressed natural gas, which is not imported because Tanzania has a lot of natural gas reserves, yeah. and it does not have any liquid or petrol product as a component of it. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the main difference between LPG and CNG or natural gas being compressed in the form of CNG. These are the, the LPG mainly is very well known when we use it for cooking at homes. Yeah. When you, with the very traditional cylinders that we put it at the kitchen. This is uh, very well known. And in some areas, in some countries that they don't have the natural gas or they cannot import the natural gas from other countries, it is used for the transportation sector still 
for the vehicles, but it, is ha it has very different uh, uh, efficiency mm -hmm. on the vehicle as compared to the natural gas. All right, because again, uh, it's a good thing that you bring in the aspect of efficiency, because a lot of drivers then would wonder, there's a perception that if I'm using a diesel car, then I have more power than, than a petrol car. So for those that want to transition to a diesel, uh, to, to a gas, to, to an engine that is being powered by gas, can you guarantee that same efficiency? Can you guarantee that same power? Can you guarantee that same speed that comes with the car? A very common question. Uh, and the answer would be yes and no. So um, um, I'll just explain in brief how, how the operation goes. So yeah. whenever we receive a customer at our station or at our conversion center, there is a pre-inspection form that we have to go through it. So we inspect the, the vehicle, we inspect the engine mechanically and electrically and then after that out of this inspection there is an evaluation criteria that we have to share with the customer whether this engine or this vehicle is eligible yeah. for being converted from petrol or diesel to CNG or not. Sometimes it requires some mechanical works to be done at the garage so we advise the customer that this one, two, three need to be done. Please yeah. go and do it at your mechanical garage and come back to us. Uh, sometimes we totally reject the vehicle because um, the kilometer run, efficiency of engine is already very bad. So definitely if it is converted to CNG, it will, it will not run uh, uh, with a good uh, performance. Yeah. So these are the pre-inspection criteria that we have to do with. Mm -hmm. Unlike many others, we, we respect the procedures. Yes, we need to develop the market, we need to encourage customers, but we need to make sure to give them the best quality of service yeah. and the highest safety regulations. Okay. So. Uh, because again, in the, I'm trying to move this conversation forward and talk about investment. If I'm running a cab or a taxi business, why should I consider this? How does it improve my business? And are there any differences between using petrol in terms of cost and using gas? In, in Tanzania market, so the, the, the difference in prices between compressed natural gas and petrol and diesel is 50%, which is a very tangible and considerable amount of saving for the fueling cost. You say 50%. So it is as compared to the, currently the prices of liter ranges around 3,100 shillings per, 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 uh, per liter as compared to CNG 1,550 shillings per kilogram. Yeah. So there are 50% savings, direct savings on the fuel. Mm -hmm. If you are talking about an investment from a car owner perspective or an Uber driver or, or, a, or a Bolt driver, a very simple calculation, the cost of investment to, to convert the vehicle starts around $700. It increases as per the, the, the capacity of the vehicle itself, yeah. so it can, it can reach up sometimes 1,000, 1,100, mm -hmm. but you can recover this money within three to six months only. Three to six months, and therein again lies another question of how much does it give me uh, this gas per kilometer? So one, one kg gives around, around nine to 11 uh, kilometers. Okay. So, so it depends so on the traffic, on, on the efficiency, of the vehicle but this is the average all right and just looking at the amount it will cost me to refill this because again you'll find for instance in kenya, uh here in kenya one of the things that a lot of these uber drivers would do is spend what ten dollars which is uh, roughly about a thousand shilling and do their errands for the better part of the day and if they need to refill they will go and put another one thousand uh, another one thousand shilling or, or ten dollars give or take and they would be able to go about their business but therein comes the question of how much would it cost me to fill this tank or to refill it so it depends again as i mentioned it depends on the capacity of of the of the engine yeah. so um, up for, for any, um, after the inspection has been conducted we propose to each and every customer according to his car uh, engine capacity and to the space that is available on the back side of the of the vehicle which type of, of, of conversion kit and the capacity of the correspondent cylinder. Yeah. So basically the conversion is two parts. There is a conversion kit, which is the brain of the engine that converts the engine from 
running under petrol to natural gas, which is installed on the front side. And there is a cylinder, which is the tank, which acts as the tank where the gas is received. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, these are the two parts. So the, there are different capacities of the kit. It's a four cylinder kit or yeah. five or six or eight. Mm -hmm. It depends on, it's an IST, it's a Prado, it's a Harrier, it's a V8. And we have converted in Tanzania all those types up to the Dala Dala buses as well. Okay. And at the back side, the more space you have, the more you can store more than one cylinder. Mm -hmm. This cylinder acts as, 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 it has also different capacities from 11 kgs, 15 kgs, and 12 k and 20 kgs. Yeah. So the more you can install two or three, mm -hmm. and this is what we are doing here. For example, we, we, we converted one V8 Land Cruiser with a two, with a two uh, cylinder capacity of each 15 kgs yeah. to allow them run more kilometers till he has to come back and fill. Uh, we converted also a Dala Dala where, while we installed three cylinders each 15 kgs means he has 45 uh, kgs to run mm. until he has to finish his round trip and come back to us. Okay. I will give you an example into numbers. Um, a typical IST Uber driver in Tanzania fills his vehicle with a maximum of 17,000 T shillings, which yeah. make him run up to between 160 to 180 kilometers. While if he runs under petrol, this 17,000 T shillings is equivalent to 35. Okay. All right. So there's the question around the cost of maintenance of the vehicle because you've sort of tankered with its its engine. So therein comes in the question around how, does that change how much I'm going to spend to maintain this vehicle? Well, according to the international standards and the regulations set in Tanzania as well, yeah. any vehicle that is running under CNG has to be inspected every six months. And this inspection has to be certified by an authorized representative and there is a sticker that has to be installed on on mm. the on the uh, on the vehicle to be eligible yeah. to be filled with cng okay. this periodical inspection it has a fees of of 50,000 t shillings excluding any spare parts that might need to be uh, changed okay so two final questions number one is how does this help the environment and lastly is this a viable investment for anyone who needs to use their car on a regular, every single day you're on the road? Okay, from an environment perspective, natural gas worldwide has been considered as a cleaner source of energy, reducing the carbon dioxide emissions by 25% as compared to petrol and diesel and other products of fuel. Uh, from uh, a uh, viability uh, of investment uh, for, for, the, for the transportation sector, it is a no-brainer decision for anyone to save 50% of his running fuel cost and have a cleaner source of energy and help the environment as well. All right, um, thank you so much for making time to speak to us. And of course, there you have it. Not only will you be saving the environment, but you're cutting your cost by upwards of 50%. That's all the time we have for you on this episode. Let's do this again, same time, same place next week.